Um, we'd really like to have a lively conversation now, and anyone who has not yet had a chance to ask a question, we'd encourage you to pose the first questions. Someone right here. This is for, this is for Professor uh, Louise Ford. You mentioned that the, the international justice movement is a, is a machine, this network is just going to go forward. I think it was um, Gabor Rona who mentioned that what we're seeing now is just an anomaly. I was speaking with a State Department lawyer last year who said that what we see now is, is an aberration. Um, we have had a couple of ad hoc tribunals uh, in, in the 90s and, and that are continuing to go on right now. And of course, we had Nuremberg. I, I tend to think, though, that, that maybe it's the cohesion of the interna international justice system that is the aberration. From, which is unfortunate. I, I agree with the movement. I, I think the fears of the ICC are trumped up. But I also think that maybe, you know, you look at the actions of Russia, look at our own actions, look at the probably imminent weaponization of space uh, in, in contradiction of treaties. Uh, I just am concerned that maybe, in actuality, the aberration we're seeing is, is, is this cohesion of the national justice system that might not be able to, to, to get traction. What do you think about that? A methodology that I'm using a lot now in my work um, is a controversial methodology called scenario forecasting. Um, the idea here is to imagine alternative futures and how under different contingencies different future scenarios would play out. You can also test out proposals such as different formulations of the crime of aggression against uh, uh, possible futures. From what I've seen after the Cold War, um, and the advance of liberalism, uh, the defeat of communism, the defeat of fascism in World War II, there's one dominant political philosophy, and that is liberalism. Um, and if liberalism continues along its route, with its focus on the individual, its focus on rights uh, rather than on duties, uh, its focus on legalism, um, uh, the checks and balances that are inherent in the system, then we're going to see many analogies between the national political systems of the world today and the international system. So that's one of the factors that I'm basing my uh, forecast upon. The other one is that this system is a disaggregated system. If you blew up the International Criminal Court tomorrow, the, the system would continue. The Rome system has permeated the national laws of so many states already, uh, and I don't see it abating. Um, uh, whether it's going to be delegitimated by its ineffectiveness, the inability to arrest political or military leaders who have committed massive crimes, uh, that remains to be seen. But those ideas will remain latent, just like the Nuremberg principles remain latent for another moment uh, when it can come back. So I, I think that the, that the future is international. There's a case pending at the International Criminal Court. I'm involved. Uh, Georgia versus Russia. Um, uh, so that's an example of the involvement of the court. Surely there are more questions. All right. Having failed to encourage those who will, thank you. Great. Uh, in the interest of keeping you folks talking, because this is so interesting, uh, Professor Turner, you were going to make a comment, and you haven't had an opportunity, and I like to make this a an open question, what comment were you intending to make? <laughs> oh. When you get to be my age, you forget after 30 <laughs> seconds. I, uh, uh, I'm just trying to think what it was. I, uh, there, there are a bunch of things. The, the young captain talked about the weapon of, weaponization of space being a uh, you know, violation of treaties. Uh, you know, it was and would have been in violation of the ABM treaty in certain settings, but today I don't know of anyone who says that you know, say say a space-based missile defense system that did not involve nuclear weapons or WMD in space would be illegal. That's why the Russians and, or the, and the Chinese are pushing this new treaty. Uh, and, uh, you know, as somebody was saying the other day about how outrageous it was that Bush would, he withdrew under Article 15 of the treaty. That was perfectly permissible. He gave the six-month notice. That's the way it works. 
you know, we have uh, we have the 16 Diamond Rings case in which the Supreme Court said once the Senate gives its consent to a treaty, its role with treaties is finished. It can't, you know, uh, interpret it. It can't uh, do anything else. And it's, it's very much like if you go back to the uh, 1789 debate over the appointment removal process, you know, the Senate was joined in appointment, but not in removal. So the, 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 the verdict, as also reaffirmed in the Myers case in 1926, was removal as an executive function. So certainly it has always been the, uh, the, the power of the president to withdraw from the treaty. The Supreme Court upheld in the uh, uh, Taiwan Treaty case, uh, uh, Goldwater versus Carter, well, that was perfectly lawful act by the president. So uh, there have been a hundred things said I'd like to comment on, but my most important comment is this has been a heck of a good conference. Tom Romig and all of the other people involved, uh, I, I can't remember the last conference that I've been to that was as well done as this, and you all just deserve uh, A-plus uh, uh, grades across the board for, for all of you. So let me at least say thank you to Tom, everybody. just say one word in response to the first question about the chaos or whether international criminal justice is in an aberration versus Guantanamo and so forth. And I think we, I, I fully agree with Noah. We're plainly in this grappling, only now developing, and there's, there's a lot of injustice potentially, and I, I take Bob's point that we have to be careful. Um, we heard from Philippe that things, you know, there are some very good standards and uh, maybe some good developments in Europe, but the case that we described very briefly about Germany has been twice rejected by the, it's a request to the prosecutor, twice rejected. The second rejection is now on appeal. It's clear the Germans are going to drag their feet and they don't want to do anything with this case, but they are willing to extradite last week a Rwandan suspected in the assassination of the former Rwandan head of state to France. So a Rwandan, the Germans will extradite to face um, penalties for international criminal law violations, but not an American. And that is a very troubling development where we are now in terms of basic fairness, et cetera. I agree with that. Was there one more? Oh. Just a minute to jot down your thoughts, suggestions, how we can do better, what we can do for you in the future, other topics and so forth would be a, a very meaningful to us. Second, um, I want to make just a, a point of personal privilege, if I have any at all. I would like to just acknowledge all the wonderful law students that helped us put this entire production together. The Longinal staff has worked behind the scenes for months, literally in terms of working out transportation schedules, driving you know, presenters to and from the airport on a very complicated schedule, uh, man and registration table, uh, just a whole host of things that had to go into this. And I'm going to personally recognize all of them and all the great job that they've done. We have finally been able to persuade Dean Roman to moderate one panel of this conference, and he's going to wrap all of these wonderful topics up and try to point and lead us the way forward. So thank you. We'll see you back at the regional.